Hey everyone, welcome to another $1,000 strap search. I've got my $1,000 in singles here and I'm about to show you what I found. But before I do, let's talk about this week's tip. Now, the world seems to be getting back to normal, uh, which is a good thing. A lot more things are opening up. Uh, another thing that's opening up, are coin shows. That's right. You can now go to coin shows again. <laughs> People are having coin shows and you can get out there in the world to see what there is to see. Now, if you're fairly new to going to coin shows, like I am, <laughs> I am fairly new to going to coin shows. Um, one of the things you're going to discover is that, well, first and foremost, it's called a coin show, <laughs> which means generally speaking, every dealer there is going to have coins. And some of the dealers might also have a little bit of currency. So my tip for this week is when you go to a coin show looking for currency, understand that they might not be <laughs> the expert you think they are when it comes to currency. Um, be aware of what you're looking for. Double check prices on stuff. They could have a gem that you can cherry pick probably fairly easily because not a lot of people focus so directly on currency. Um, stuff like the uh, uh, the wood chopper with the public error. Some people may not know about that. Some people may not be aware of the simple things that I tell you about the 1935G silver certificates. Um, just things like that to be aware of. People are going to have those items. They may not necessarily know what they are. Anyway, that's my tip for this week. I'm going to get these thousand singles out of the way and let's take a look at what I found. Now, before we go through these, I just want to let you know these notes are from my Reno trip. When I went to Reno, Nevada, uh, these bills came from the Pepper Mill, uh, the Pepper Mill's poker room. <laughs> Imagine me being there. Uh, Silver Legacy, the Eldorado, and Circus Circus. So that's where I got these from. And uh, let's see, it's an interesting little dot there. This first note that I found, uh, this is a birthday note. This would be January 5th, 1996, or it could be the 1st of May, 1996. Either way, I like seeing notes that are fairly close. Uh, there's a good chance this could be somebody's birthday that is watching. Another birthday note, this one would be the 26th of January, 1991. Um, didn't find any trinaries. Uh, did find some quads, though, quad twos. Quad twos again, starting with the quad twos. Quad fours. Quad fives. Quad sixes. Quad sevens. Quad nines. So lots of quads. And then check this out. I've got five ones in a row. And it has the sixth to go with it. So six of a kind, five in a row, six of a kind. And uh, looks like there's a little bit of green ink that's extended up over here. So that's kind of interesting as well. Um, not so much the ink, but the numbers being five in a row and a six to go with it. That is a lot of ones on a Boston note, which also has a lot of ones to go with it. Then we get to my stars. 2017 A star note. That one's okay. This one's really nice. 2017 really crisp. Another 2017. This one's also in decent shape. Also in good shape here. And 2013, New York note, B. And it's my favorite way to start. B-O-O, -O, my boo note. <laughs> yes, this can be one of those uh, 2013s that are repeated. And uh, being a lower number, it's definitely in the range, so I will have to check that one out. Another one, also a boo note. I didn't check these too quickly. Let's see, are they, uh, no, they're not consecutive. Same print run though, 0049, 0042, so fairly, fairly close. Uh, yeah, so that one's there. So yeah, I found a couple of the 2013s. Then we get the 2009 for a star note. Don't find a lot of those. And the older notes, 2001, not in the greatest of shape, but still getting tough to find. 1999. And then the oldest note I found is this 1985. And this 1985 is actually in really good shape. Uh, it's crisp, really good paper quality. I checked the back to see if it had the uh, 129 number. It doesn't. It has 126, so it's close. The 129 is on this side for the 1985s. So, yep, yeah, that was the oldest note that I found. So, what did I bring out from my box? Well... I got a monster. <laughs> I got a monster, and uh, I am very proud to show this one. Uh, I knocked off one of my wish list notes. 
uh, in the top 100. Uh, I believe this one is in the top 10. So uh, what did I manage to score? I got me a poker chip. A $10 1923 legal tender. Uh, they only made one signature pattern with these, Spielman and White, so there aren't very many of these out there to begin with. The 1923 $10 poker chip, um, yeah, this has been on my wish list for quite some time. It's actually, it's graded 20, very fine, um, which is good. I like the fact that it's graded. I don't have to put too much thought into it. I'm going to zoom in into the different sections here so you can take a closer look at it. It does have a, a crease through the horizontal plane, but that's all right. Uh, I do want to point out that serial number, 509687. And we can throw in the AB, too. <laughs> Why not? Um, that would be, if you rearrange those numbers, that's 567890AB. <laughs> that would be a mixed ladder. So that's pretty cool. Um, I don't know if that counts as a fancy serial number, but uh, yeah, my $10 poker chip has a mixed ladder on it. That is just really cool. All right, $10 poker chip, you can see right here, we've got series of 1923. This note is a legal tender at its face value for all that's public and private. Um, so that's all standard. You've got Spielman and White as the two signatures. Once again, it's got the series of 1923 there. And, of course, being a legal tender, it has a red seal, red numbers, and they use the red ink for the X, the $10, the Roman numeral for 10, which is also quite cool. You can see it actually says 10 here and 10 here. Now, some of you may be wondering why this is called the poker chip. And the first time I ever saw one of these, the person explaining it to me said, yeah, I've got a poker chip. And they just kept saying, calling this a poker chip. And, you know, yeah, I got my poker chip. And they were pointing at it like this. And I'm thinking, well, that's just a seal. That doesn't really, it's not very reminiscent of a poker chip to me. But, you know, they didn't explain it to me. So I will explain it to you. The reasoning this is called a poker chip is on the back. Check out those two poker chips. That is pretty impressive. <laughs> the ray design that surrounds the 10 on both sides gives the illusion of the old time poker chips, uh, the stackers. Uh, they make silver uh, coins like that now so that you can stack like that, silver rounds. And of course you have the rays coming out of the 10 just to go along with that. So these are the reason it's called the poker chip. And uh, once again, checking the back, it says 20. It has nothing, no, no marks on the back at all like that. So this one is really good. It is slightly wider on this side than it is on this side. And uh, let me just zoom in here. We'll show you a close-up of the poker chip itself. That is just really, really cool. And then you've got the rays coming off the center. The leaves inside the 10 like that, also very cool. Checking the other poker chip as well. So you can see this one is in pretty good shape. It's a little on the dirty side. A little on the dirty side. That's about it. It's got a couple, a couple little creases and stuff. But you're talking... It is graded by PMG. It's graded at a 20. Um, yeah, I, I've, I've wanted this one for a while. And uh, they are a little on the pricey side. I was finally able to find one in a condition that I liked at a price that I liked. And, uh, well, that's the thing. <laughs> the time to buy something is when you see it because you may never see it again. Let's take a look at what the book has to say about this one. <clears throat> I got the book. And let's see here. Take that out. You can see the picture. There it is. The uh, design number 18. There is the picture of the poker chip. Uh, this was the last large size $10 note issued prior to the introduction of the small size series. So yeah, there it is in the book. And it's at the bottom of the page. So I have to turn the page so we can see the specs. There is the back. Once again, that one is pretty bright. And you can see there was only two made, number 123 and 123 star. Both have the Spielman and White signature combination. Um, this one starts off VG8 at $650. Um, good luck. <laughs> you will not find one for $650. In F12, it says $1,500. Um, no. <laughs> Once again, you will not find one for $1,500. You can see the VF20, that one is $3,500. Um, that's the nice part about my note. Uh, my note's graded a 20. 
I don't have to debate anything. There it is, VF20, $3,500. Uh, if you go up a little higher, you're talking 40 uh, would be $5,500. Um, and when you get to Gem 65, you're talking 19500 And remember, this book is four years old. So these prices have changed quite a bit. <clears throat> like I said, this one, according to the book, in a 20 grades out at about, or uh, this grades at a 20 and a 20 prices out around $3,500. The trick, of course, is to find one. Uh, they are not easy to find. They are not easy to find in a condition that you'd want. And most of the ones that you do see are asking way over that price because, well, currency is hot right now. So, if you have an opportunity to get one of these at a decent price, please jump on it. Um, not only do you have currency collectors looking for this particular note, but there is a large segment of the population that uh, plays a little game called, oh, uh, what do they call it, Texas Hold'em? Yeah, that's the game. <laughs> I, I would know. Um, there are more people who play poker than there are people who collect currency. And when you tell a poker player who happens to have thousands of dollars in his pocket so he can play poker, that there is a note this cool, and by the way, it's called a poker chip, <laughs> those people want one. <laughs> so, <clears throat> not only is this a tough note to get for, for currency collectors, it's a note that poker players also want to get. Like I said, with all of those people trying to get it, you can understand why the demand for this note is as high as it is. Me being a coin, or me being a currency collector and a poker player, well, it's a no-brainer. I had to get one. All right, guys, that's what I've got for you this week. If you learned anything new, go ahead and hit that like button. If you like what you see and you want to see more, please subscribe. I love reading all your comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next week.